come back live on video as well on facebook.com backslash live now DT, that it is my opportunity, my honor, and my privilege to be welcoming back to the show Amani Free. Now, Amani Free played for the CNS North Stars and then went off for a little bit, got some experience outside of our community, came back to the North Stars, and is now playing for Quinnipiac. And she, it just in, in, in the strange way, you know, God works in mysterious ways type of thing, and we were just talking about it off the air, is the fact that the women's basketball team for Quinnipiac, anywhere they could have gone to play, and they are playing in Syracuse as the Syracuse Orange women's team gets to host the first and second rounds of the tournament. And then not only does Syracuse get to host that, but Syracuse has an opportunity of playing Quinnipiac in the next round. Syracuse takes on Fordham, and then South Dakota State will take on Quinnipiac. Whoever wins those two games will be facing off against one another in the second round of the tournament. So Amani is coming home, and I appreciate the opportunity that we have this morning to speak with Amani here on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. So without further ado, let's bring her in to the show, and I very much appreciate her taking some time with us this morning. Amani, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well. And, and Amani, you know, first and foremost, when you got the news, I mean, you're sitting there on Selection Monday wondering what's going to happen. When you saw that your team is coming to Syracuse, just what went through your mind? I was excited. I thought to myself, wow, I get to play at home for college, and it's going to be a great experience. And to have that opportunity, I mean, did you ever think that something like that would happen, that out of everywhere you could play in the country, you would end up back in Syracuse? No, I did not. I did not think I would come back home. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what do you think about it? What was the conversation? Because I know that, that Dad is, is always, you know, connecting with what you're doing and paying attention and whatnot. Did Dad call you almost immediately when that happened? <laughs> he sent me a text message and said, you're coming home. How does it feel? And I said, it feels great. And so for you to have this opportunity, when you played for the North Stars and for those that are watching on Facebook Live right now, they could see – a picture of that. When you played for the North Stars, you got to play inside of the Carrier Dome, and you were obviously playing for something very, very important inside of the Dome. Just just what you can say about coming back to the Dome, knowing that you've been there for big games in high school before, just what it's, what it's like to come back into familiar territory. Uh, it's kind of the same feeling. You know that this is an important game. It's do or die, and you have to work hard and willing to win. And so... As you come back into the Carrier Dome, what do you like about the Dome? I mean, the Dome is something special to collegiate basketball, men's and women's side of things. What do you think about the venue? I mean, obviously you're coming back home, but at the same time, what do you like about the Dome? I like the atmosphere. Um, when the fans come, you can hear them cheering. It's loud. You get to experience how much people are going to scream at you and how much you really have to focus into the game. And, and when you see this, speaking here with Imani Free, who played for CNS and now is a true freshman for Quinnipiac, and Quinnipiac is coming to the first round of the NCAA tournament in Syracuse, hoping to move on to the second round, which is also going to be in Syracuse. It, to, to know that you're going to be playing up against a team like South Dakota State, I mean, obviously South Dakota State is, is farther away, and, and Quinnipiac is not that far you know, down the road, so to speak. And and so for you to be coming out of Connecticut, do you expect and anticipate there to be fans, you know, kind of traveling here because it's a Northeast game? Do you feel like you're going to get some, you know, Quinnipiac love in the crowd, so to speak? Uh, Yes, I do. I believe that our fans are very dedicated to us in all sports at Quinnipiac and that they're going to be willing to travel. What's it been like playing for this Quinnipiac team. I know that obviously there's a bunch of seniors on the team and you've had to wait your turn and, and, you know, you get some minutes here and there, but what's, what's this first year been like for you? It's been a great experience. I trust all my teammates and they trust me and it's been amazing to be able to experience this with all of them. What have they taught you? What can you say you've taken away from your teammates so far? Leadership, how to continue to cheer someone on, pick some teammates up when they're getting down, and just being hard teammate in practice on the court every day. And with you being so used to obviously getting out there and, and playing and being a big part of teams in high school and whatnot, does it humble you when you, you have to kind of wait your turn and earn your keep, so to speak? 
Yes, it gives you perspective that, hey, I understand that I'm new here and I have to earn a spot, but it just pushes you to work harder. And we look at this team, this this Quinnipiac team, and, and I want to uh, bring up the schedule here as everybody is, is watching here on Facebook Live to show everyone this. The team is 26-6 and six overall, and you have 26 wins and are currently on a 21-game winning streak. So 26 wins in the season, 21 of them have come in a row. Just what you could say about being a part of that, a 21-game winning streak as you come into the NCAA tournament. <laughs> it's been hard work and dedication to the game from each and every one of us on the team. And we go back to, you know, the last time the team had lost. You played Central Florida on December 30th and lost 47-45 in a very close game. I, I, December 30th. You have not lost a game in 2019. Just what that what that does for the team, what the atmosphere has been like, what you remember about losing that game by two points on December 30th, because after that, the team has taken off. Uh, it was hard losing that game, but we all realized, hey, we just need to – take out what we need to get better, see what we need to work on, put it in practice, and then get better for the next game. What what has kind of led to this 21-game winning streak at Quinnipiac in, in your in your mind? I mean, you, you, have, you have the win over Richmond on December 19th and then the loss to UCF after that. There was a time period where this team lost three of four. Three of four, uh, Central Michigan, Princeton were both losses. Richmond was a victory. And then UCF was a loss. After losing three of four, the 21-game winning streak began with Fairfield University. What would you attribute to that turnaround in the season? What happened? Uh, the coaching staff pushed us really hard in practice. We tuned in, and we really focused up knowing that we want to do well this season and excel. And the buy-in of the team, did it, did it just feel different? I mean, did, did something – it, it, could you sense some type of a change there, you know, at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019? Did you just, I mean, outside of just, you know, buying in collectively and whatnot, did you feel like maybe the message changed from the coaching staff? Did the players just, I mean, what happened to, to kind of, you know, bring that air of change? Because this team has not only played well, you haven't lost. We realized that it was getting closer to March Madness time and that we need to really – Juice it up a little bit more. That's our phrase for the year. Juice up and get focused in and really get in tune with everything. So little details, the coaching staff focused on little details, focused, <clears throat> made us really focus in practice and pushed us. And looking at the MAC tournament, the MAAC, speaking here with Imani Free, true freshman on Quinnipiac's team for women's basketball that will be coming to the Dome for the first round and hopefully the second round. If they advance, they would be staying here as well. When we go back to the MAC tournament, you won the MAC tournament. So, you know, put yourself in a position, obviously, to get into the NCAA tournament. Defeated Fairfield University, who was ranked ninth in the country at the time. Defeated Monmouth University, who I mean, when we look at Fairfield University, part part of me that was ranked that was nine inside of that. You defeat them in the quarters. You defeat Monmouth. You defeat Marist. You didn't just win these games. You defeated Fairfield by just shy of twenty points. You defeated Monmouth by almost forty points, and you defeated Marist by thirty. Just just what that says. I mean, not only did you win the MAC tournament, but you blew teams out in that. I mean, just. What happened in the tournament now? I mean, it, it seems like as the season's gone on, the team has just come with more fire and, like you said, juiced up, so to speak. Yes, we really did. Yeah, you know, and what, what, what was it in that tournament to see how strong this, this team has played? I mean, to take on teams that you're used to seeing in the MAC and you didn't just beat them, you beat them heavily, handily. Just, to, you know, why, why was this team coming out the way that they did, in your opinion? How did Quinnipiac – not only win these games, but win them by 30-point margins, almost a 40-point margin? Uh, in practices, we would really focus in on film, and then on the court, we would pay attention to little details with every team, put it into action, and then we went out on the court for the games, and we just put it into play. So you have South Dakota State coming up. What do you know about South Dakota State? Uh, we're not sure yet. We're watching film today. So you'll, you'll get to know them and kind of get to know what it is. On the other side of it, Syracuse is there in the bracket, and you're going to be inside of the Cary Dome like we spoke about, and you'll be around family again. We, we talk about, you know, family all the time, and I know that dad has been a big part of, of you know, your training and everything like that. 
What do you think about this moment to know that you're going to be in front of your family and you're going to have the opportunity to have your own cheer section, so to speak? <laughs> it's a great experience. I'm really excited to be in it. And what is this first season of college basketball taught you, Amani? I know that you've you know, always grown and always learned something from when you were little coming up through the ranks and whatnot. What, do, what have you been learning this season? I've learned that I need to continue to work hard and just push myself as well as my teammates just to get better every day. And who would you say are some of the leaders on your team right now? Everyone has a role. Everyone's a leader. So everybody on that team has a piece. And, and to you, you know, having that collective group and that collective unit bringing each other up and whatnot, just what you could say about your head coach and, and what they've done to make sure that this team is one cohesive group. She believes in all of us. She pushes us to be our best, and we believe in her, so we trust her process. And what's been her message to you? <laughs> Work hard, focus, be relentless, and be juiced up. And, and, and you know, to, to, to speak on, as we are speaking on your head coach, Trisha, just, you know, what can you say about Trisha as a head coach? Does she remind you of anybody you've had before, or is she truly unique in your opinion? She is truly unique. I'm glad that I got to experience it with her. That coming from Amani Free. Amani will be prepared here as we get set forward. Quinnipiac will be coming to the Carrier Dome for the first portion of the NCAA tournament. Amani is returning home. Quinnipiac is looking to take on South Dakota State and make this 21-game winning streak go to 22 and so on and so forth. Amani, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on the broadcast and I know the community is looking forward to seeing you come back, and I hope nothing but the best for Quinnipiac. I'll be at the game covering it. So I'll see you soon, and God bless with everything, and please travel safe. Thank you. God bless you too. All right. Take care. All right. That coming from Amani Free once again here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR dot com backslash wake up call dt i gotta give a shout out to my family in spain not spain not like spain illinois or spain new york or spain whatever real real spain and you know the the caracas and the gutierrez family i want that's my curling my r's you know it's funny jordan sits here he goes i can't i can't curl my r's i was like i think it's maybe you have to have hispanic i don't i don't necessarily think you have to have hispanic blood to be able to do it it helps but, you know, shout out to the Caracal family because they watch Wake Up Call live. Every time I do a video, I don't even tell them. I never tell them. I never say, hey, I'm doing a video you want to watch. I never do it. They see me on Facebook. They see the video. And they listen. And they watch to almost every single, I think it's every single one of them. It's like 99% of the time at least. So, at the very least. So, to my family in Spain, the country of Spain that watches and listens to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, I cannot thank you enough. I love you all, and I appreciate you, and I look forward someday to being able to be in the same room with you and break bread together. So God bless to my family in Spain and to everybody out there. Here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, we're going to take a step aside. So you're watching on this video. This one featured Amani Free. Amani Free is coming back with Queen of Piac. She's coming back to familiar territory, and she'll be here hanging out inside of the Carrier Dome with the Quinnipiac Bobcats trying to defeat South Dakota State. Quinnipiac is on a 21-game winning streak. They've won 26 games out of the 32 they've had. They're 26-6, and six, and they're on a 21-game winning streak, including winning their conference tournament, the MAC tournament, MAAC, defeating Fairfield, Monmouth, and Marist, defeating Fairfield by 15, Monmouth by 38, and Marist by 30, en route to facing off against South Dakota State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. I want to thank Amani, as always, for being a part of the show. She's a tremendous human being that comes from a family that I know cares so very much, and I know that they will be at the Dome, and I know that they're excited, and I know that this is an awesome experience. Syracuse will take on Fordham, the three against the 14, respectively, and number six seed at South Dakota State will take on 11 seed at Quinnipiac. Whoever wins the South Dakota State Quinnipiac game will face off against the winner of Syracuse Fordham. That game will also be at the Carrier Dome. We'll take a step aside here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt. As we take a step aside here 
on the internet radio airwaves. We will end this video and begin a new one. So if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you know the drill. We'll end this video. We'll start a new video. So stay with me here on facebook.com backslash live now DT. When I come back, I will officially unveil my NCAA tournament bracket right after this.